Um, okay, so so transitioning a little yeah. a, a little bit towards another administrative issue affects players everywhere. Um, guy like Chris Borland, outstanding right. linebacker at the University of Wisconsin. You know, we talked about upward mobility and upside for Cardale Jones. This guy had a bright future in front of him, but as a precautionary measure. He says, you know what, I'm hanging up my cleats. I don't want to pursue the sport of football anymore to preserve my health. How, how would you evaluate the job that the NFL has done and is doing to address player health and in, in, in the context of head trauma? Well, let me address Chris Borland real quick, and Maddie can testify to this. If your heart is not into something, then you shouldn't do it. Because then Chris, if he would continue to play, would take away from the game and I think take away from his teammates. So he made a very personal decision and one that I don't begrudge. I do think though he should give back some of the guaranteed signing bonus money that he received because he signed a four-year contract and got four year worth of signing bonus. But that's for another argument. The NFL I think has done a great job. Uh, the Heads Up program for youth football and we're going all around the country now and I do football camps here in town and up in Maslin, Ohio where the emphasis on uh, seeing what you hit and hitting what you see. And the rule that I like to tell parents is head up, eyes up, wrap up. If you do that, I'm not saying you're going to avoid head, head injuries, because you might not, but your chances of be getting a, a traumatic head injury, I think, goes down if you see what you hit and your head's in a proper position. Uh, uh, there's, uh, right now, there are a couple tools in use and one in development. There's a tool in use that goes into a helmet that measures the impact of the helmet. Then it shoots the information from the chip in the helmet back to like an app on an iPhone, and it's level, it measures the level of the impact of the helmet. Then they can tell by that should this player be checked out. There's a long way to go with that technology. The other thing that they're trying to develop, and uh, they're in the stages of doing this because I just held one in my hand the other day, is that they have a little chip with a skull cap. So that, instead of measuring the impact on a helmet, actually measures the impact on the head itself so they can get a better program. But overall, I think the NFL has done a great job uh, in, in promoting and trying to limit head injuries. You can't eliminate them completely or we'll no longer have football. But what you can do is diagnose them better, which they're doing. And I think they're extra precautionary, which they're doing. And the rule changes in the NFL, which we've all watched, I think they've helped. And I, I do believe as time goes on, you'll see traumatic hand injuries uh, dissipate. Yeah, well, it sounds like some serious strides are being made. But let's talk NFL draft. With the draft just around the corner, Devin Smith is definitely a standout Buckeye who has a chance to make it in the NFL. So let's talk about him. What teams are kind of looking for or in need of an explosive wide receiver? And what does he bring to the table? Well, Devin, I think, earned the title of the best deep ball catcher in college football last year. So the question mark on Devin coming into this was, how does he run regular routes? Can he run an in route okay, a slant, a seven cut, a five cut, whatever cut you want to run, how good is he at doing that? And I think Devin, uh, during his personal workouts in the combine, shown that he can be that type of guy. I don't think he's a first rounder. I, I would think Devin would be late second, early third round type of guy. All right, well, what about Michael Bennett and the Curtis Grant? Where do you see them kind of fitting in in the draft? Well, I think Curtis Grant can be a, a late round pick I don't, or a free agent. I think he'll get into a camp. But Michael Bennett's unique uh, in this regard because he is a pass rusher that plays a defensive tackle. Usually your best pass rushers are the guys on the outside. So Michael Bennett has the ability to rush the passer because he's so athletic from what they call a three technique or an inside defensive tackle. And I think Michael uh, is going to be a, a great player. Uh, I don't think he's going to be drafted really high. I mean, maybe second, third, fourth round. Uh, but he's going to be a pleasure once the team gets him because he's, he can be that good. Closing in on the, on the draft. We're inside the 10-day uh, waiting period until that uh, starts in Chicago, of course. Another NFL qu question for you, Chris. So, of course, with your brother, Rick, being the general manager of the Minnesota Vikings, and relevant to Adrian Peterson's recent reinstatement uh, to the NFL this past Friday, how do you see the franchise essentially navigating that, that situation since Peterson has not been, you know, um, <laughs> he, he's been pretty clear that he's not comfortable 
with that franchise and returning to it? How do you see it playing? Yeah, I, well, I think there's a lot of posturing that goes on from NFL players. And if you if you really read it, a lot of the, the complaints are coming out from the agent, not exactly the player's mouth. Now, the player's responsible for what the agent says. Um, but to me, I think this is a lot of posturing. And as a general manager, and even as a player, when you go through these certain contract negotiations, you got to tell yourself it's not personal. Even though somebody tries to make it personal, it's not personal. So if you're the Minnesota Vikings and, and you're evaluating this, and this is no inside information, this is just what, what I think will happen, is that Adrian Peterson, from a business point of view, gained a year. Because as an NFL running back, your body takes tremendous hit. And at 30, you're usually on your way out, or they're trying to get you out. So Adrian's a freak by nature, as we know, coming off that ACL injury. And plus, he saved his body a year from not playing last year. So you got to think and make a decision. Does he fit into our team? Is, is, is he the guy that we want at $12 million a year? So financially, financially, if it makes sense, then you bring him back. And I think, from my perspective, if I'm the Vikings, I bring Adrian Peterson back. And they can cry and whine, and his agent can moan and send threatening emails or texts or talk to reporters or whatever he wants to do. All he wants, it doesn't matter. The Vikings, in my opinion, have all the cards. Now, if you're Adrian's people, you say, OK, well, Adrian, well, he's going to come and he's going to tank it. He's not going to give 100%. Well, then you can find him conduct detrimental to the team, or that he'll lose the players in his locker room. and. I, look, I, I don't know Adrian Peterson. I've watched the guy play. I don't think it's in his DNA to tank it. There's no way. If he's playing for the Vikings, then he'll play all out. But from my perspective, uh, I've heard my colleagues at ESPN say they think he's going to be playing for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I'd be shocked if he's not lining up for the Minnesota Vikings. Interesting. Hot takes yeah. from your dad. Yeah, maybe we'll be on profootballtalk.com now. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, breaking news. I have no idea what Rick's going to do, though. I really don't. Okay. We don't right. talk business. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. All right, well, that's going to do it for this this week. Dad, thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate your input. Um, everyone, be sure to follow Chalk Talk on Twitter, at Chalk Talk OSU, hashtag CTOSU. For Andrew Todd Smith and Chris Spielman, I'm Maddie Spielman. Everyone have a great week. Mm -hmm.